இந்த பதார்த்தங்களில் பட்டியலை பார்த்து சமையலில் ஆர்வம் கொண்ட பக்தர்கள் இந்த பதார்த்தங்களை எல்லாம் சமைத்து பகவானுக்கு சமர்ப்பிக்கலாம் என்று கூறியிருக்கின்றார் தொடர்ந்து அவரது அபிர்பவா சக்தியின் மூலமாக எந்நேரத்திலும் அவர் அங்கே வருவார்
Raghunath Das Goswami is one of the six Goswamis. Right? There's Rupa and Sanatan and Jiva, Gopal Bhatta. Then there's a Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, but this is Raghunath Das Goswami. Raghunath Das Goswami and Bhavad, Namadir Al Goswami Gali Urvaravad. So Raghunath Das Goswami was not a Brahmana, he was not born in a Brahmana family, but he was born in a very wealthy Bengali family. His father and his uncle were very, very rich men. They were so rich that they were maintaining all the Brahmanas in Bengal by giving them charity. Now the other Goswamis, Rupa, Sanatan, Jiva, Gopal Bhatta, Raghunath Bhatta, they are all Brahmanas. They are all Brahman families. At least by birth, they were two Brahmanas. But Raghunath Das, he was, he was born in this wealthy family, but not Brahman. But somehow, as a young man, he was very attractive. He was hearing about Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's pastimes and how Lord Chaitanya had done so many amazing things like defeating Keshava Kashmiri, and then leading the civil protest against the Chankazi. And then at the age of 24, he renounced everything and taken sannyas and gone to Jagannath Puri and there he made Sarvabhomabhata Charya. He changed him from an impersonalist to a devotee. Now, of course, in those days, there was no internet and there were no mobile phones. But the news about Lord Chaitanya and his activities was chat was spread everywhere. So Raghunath was hearing about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he was thinking, I want to go and be with him, I want to join. And he was very eager to go and leave his home and several times he would run away from the home and his father would have to hire people to go and find him and bring him back. So he was a very young man, Raghunath was a young man at this time. And the family thought, well, let's get him married. So they found a very chaste, very attractive young woman and he got him married to this young lady. So 
But when you get to 40 and 45 or 50, then you may think again about it. There's more. I don't know if I want to or you not. Know. I don't know if I want to or not. So if you're a Buddhist, it's not a problem. You know, you can become a Buddhist monk and then you can give up being a Buddhist monk. But if you're in the Sanatana Dharma, if you're following the Varnashram Dharma, once you come to the renounced place, you don't go back. So we, we find sometimes like that, that when a man is young, he really wants to renounce, yes, I want to renounce everything. But then after some time, then he thinks, well, oh, I am I'm not so sure I want to do nothing. And they want to go into the material life. So Lord Chaitanya told Braganda, you go home and stay at home. And don't act like a madman. Don't be a foolish person. Behave like a normal person. And remember, Krishna is in your heart. Krishna is with you. <laughs> So Raghunath went home and after getting these instructions from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he changed himself. He was just like a, a normal person. He wasn't behaving so extreme anymore. And he was and all the family members were very happy and they thought, oh, Raghunath's good now. Now he's a normal person. In the Upadesa, they get up and run that as a from the middle of the century. In the TV, say, no, Allah, or Nudana Mana, Manila, Vitil Nanda Banda, Ale Pati, our day, Pruvatila, or Ramana Dasa, or the Sanda Manila, and Kirkin Ragh, Manisha, and then. And Ragunath was very expert in dealing and helping the family. At one time there was a problem because uh, the, his uncle had done some, something wrong. He had been cheating one of the Mohammedan rulers. And it was Raghunath who was able to talk very sweetly and convince the Mohammedan ruler not to press any charges against his uncle. <laughs> So this way Raghunath was staying at home and he was helping out with the family affairs and everything seemed very peaceful. He wasn't running away anymore. And then after some time, news came that Lord Nityananda is coming with his party of cowherd boys and they're going to go to Parihati. So Raghunath requested his family, can I also go to Parihati to see Lord Nityananda and get his blessing? <laughs> So 
So Raghunath Das was purchasing everything. And the news spread to the nearby villages, other villages. They heard, oh, there's a festival going on in Panihati. So they heard there's going to be prasadam for everyone. So, you know, when there's prasadam, everybody turns up, you know. Everybody knows it's going to be prasadam. So, people were coming from nearby villages and the vendors were coming. They were bringing their yogurt and their flat rice and their bananas and mangoes and everything. And Raghunath would purchase everything from them.
So they organize people, go and find them, go and look for them and bring them back. So they sent many men to look for them, but none of them could find them. And they even they met a group of Vaishnavas with Shiva and the same. And they asked Shiva and the same, did you see Raghunath anywhere? And they said, no, we never saw him anywhere. So Raghunath managed to get away from home and he walked all the way to Jagannath Puri. He walked from Navadri all the way to Jagannath Puri. It took him about 12 days. And when he got there to Jagannath Puri, then he was brought before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said to him, he said, Oh, he said, you have come, he said, you are very lucky to get free. He said, you were like an animal which has fallen into a pit where people pass through. And usually animal will fall there, they will never be able to get out. But somehow, by the mercy of Krishna, you have managed to get free. <laughs> So the important point from this past time is that Raghunath Das, when he approached Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he could not get free of the material life. So if you go directly to Krishna, you cannot expect to get the support of Krishna. But if you go to Krishna's devotee, just like when Raghunath went to Lord Nityananda, then Lord Nityananda gave mercy to Raghunath Das, and Raghunath was able to get free. The devotees of Krishna are more merciful than Krishna. If you do service for the devotees, that will help you get the mercy of Krishna. So because Lord Nityananda had done such a nice service for Lord Nit, because Lord Radhanath had done such a nice service for Lord Nityananda, Lord Nityananda had blessed him and given him the encouragement to get free from material. So Raghunath was a very strict devotee. He followed all the regular principles, just like lines on a stone. And he lived to a ripe old age, he stayed 
first he, for some time he stayed in Jagannath Puri, where he associated with Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he was mainly under the shelter of Swarup Namadhar Goswami. And if Raghunath wanted to know anything, he would inquire through Swarup Namadhar, because Swarup Namadhar was the secretary of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Raghunath would not go directly to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, but he would ask Swarup Namadhar, and Swarup Namadhar would ask Lord Chaitanya. So Raghunath had asked Swarup Namandar to ask Chaitanya Mahaprabhu about what should this duty be. So Lord Chaitanya gave very important instructions. He told them that you should never talk like worldly people and never hear what the ordinary people have to say. And then do not eat opulent food and do not dress in an opulent manner. Constantly chant the holy name of the Lord and keep the Lord in your heart. And Lord Chaitanya then also gave Raghunandas a stone from the Govardhan hill and asked Raghunandas to worship his stone. On the day of the Govardhan Puja and a boat, then we always have a big festival with the Govardhan Shila and make a big offering. So Raghunath stayed there in Jagannath Puri, so long as Lord Chaitanya appeared. After Lord Chaitanya disappeared, then also Swarup Damodar disappeared, then Raghunath went to Vrindavan and took shelter of Rupa and Sanatana. <laughs> Then he went to stay at Radha Kund and he stayed there at Radha Kund when there was nothing there. There was only the rice field where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had taken a bath. So Raghunath had come there to Vrindavan. He had not brought any money. He gave up. He left his family, left all the money. He didn't take anything with him. While he was there at Radhakund, he was thinking it would be very nice if there was some money we could make a nice bathing gap at Radhakund. So it happened that one man came. The man was actually going up to Balrik Ashram 
and he was carrying a lot of gold. He wanted to donate it to Badrik Ashram. But what, while he was going up to Badrik Ashram, he had a dream. And in the dream, Krishna appeared to him and told him, Don't take this money to Badrik Ashram. Take it to Radha Kund. Radha, Raghunath is there and he needs this gold. You take it to him. So the man came all the way down the Himalayas and he went to Radha Kund and he found out Raghunath and he gave him all the gold. And in this way, Raghunath was able to use all that gold to make a very nice, beautiful ghat, as we know there, Radha Kund and Shama Kund. These were built with the wealth, the money which was given to Raghunath. So Raghunath Das moved there and used to worship Radha and Krishna. He would take bath in the Radha Kund three times a day. He was always observed in love of Radha and Krishna. And he was meditating on devotional service in the mood of the Gopi. So Raghunath is actually one of the Mandaris, one of the intimate associates in the past times of Raghunath. And he came to teach us how to engage in devotional senses in the mood of uh, austerity by accepting great austerity. He also wrote an important book called Manasiksha, the teachings of the mind. So yesterday was the anniversary of the festival at Panihati. It's a very wonderful festival. Often many temples they will also celebrate the Shirdani festival. They will arrange flat rice and yoga and they will distribute it to the devotees. So we are praying to Raghunath Das also that we can also do some service for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission just to see this. In other words, you know, you may think, oh, 
You may think it's very austere to fast fully on the privacy, but for somebody else, they don't think it's very big or scary. They just do it for that thing in the Bible. Strain themselves in that way. In the cutting part, we have to do this. For the one of the CM, for the one of the CM, கட்டு பாடு என்பது மற்றவர்களுக்கு இல்லாமல் இருக்கலாம் கட்டு பாடு ஒரு நபருக்கு நபர் வேறுபடுகின்றது It means that we have to give 
give up everything, but at least to, to use everything in Krishna's language. That was the so, just having to deal with wealth, having to use all the opulence, but having it, just thinking of it all as Krishna's property and for the service of Krishna, that is actually renunciation as Rupa Goswami describes. Nirvanda Krishna Sambhande Yukta Vairagya Kishate But to use everything in the service of Krishna, that is actual renunciation. But follow Vairagya to give up things to the world, to give them up falsely. The Maya Vadi Sanyati is they renounce, but their renunciation is artificial, it's followed by Vairagya. They give up the objects of the world. We will take them and use them for the service of Krishna. So we are not afraid of the material energy because we can convert it to spiritual energy by using it in Krishna's service. <laughs> And you can see sometimes Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada, he would use the opulence. Sometimes he would use a big car and he would wear sometimes shoes and different things just to show people that he could use opulence in Krishna's so for some devotees, like Raghunanda, he was showing people how to give up the opulence, how to avoid the opulence, how to practice the real austerity by giving, turning away from these things. But other people, they can take them and use them in Krishna. Of course, Ragnar, he didn't use any opulence for himself, but when he got the gold, he used it to build the Radha Kund, to make the nice bathing gap for the pleasure of Radha and Krishna. So the devotee will accept opulence for Krishna's service, but not for his own sense gratification. That is the standard. Our 
the prophet said, they can take the picture of me counting the money, and I will spend it all for So we have a few announcements to be made. 